TCI is brought to you by Spendthrift Stallion Arch Arch Arch, winner of the Southwest Stakes and Grade 1 Arkansas Derby. Welcome back to another episode of TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Joel, let's jump right into the TCI Top 10 because, man, we see a lot of movement here. Mm. You know, it unfortunately starts with our number one top billing injured. He's going to come off the Derby Trail. Joel, this is a huge hit. It really is, John. I mean, Shug Begay, he had a tough week. I mean, when you look at top billing, obviously a big hit to our list. He was number one now with that injury. Unfortunately, he has to come off the list because he's off the Derby Trail. But also Honor Code, John, mm -hmm. his first string horse. You know, here's a colt that they've been really trying to find a spot for, not really giving off very many positive signs along the way. So they run him in a Gulfstream allowance race. And, and don't get me wrong, nobody was going to catch social inclusion right. yesterday. I mean, he, this horse sets a new track record. And the way that track's playing right now, if you have any quality speed at all, which obviously he did, there might have been a handful of closers around the world that could have given him a race. I mean, that's how impressive a performance it was. Social Inclusion got a 106 Brisnet number. Wow. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the, the best two-term Brisnet number this year by a three-year-old. So give him his due. He's a big-time talent. Could make an impact on the Derby Trail, even though he's well behind. But Honor Code, to me, going into the gate hot, John, you know, very antsy, not wanting to load. And even though he looked to be striding out, out well in the end, to me, he just never made, I mean, to give me 10 lengths, never made any impact at all in the stretch. You know, at least top billing in his races, he was making some impact in the stretch against the quality horses he was facing. Even, you know, at least, you know, Conquest Titan, I saw some closing ability out of him when Cairo Prince ran so well, you know, in the Holy Bull. I just didn't see that from Honor Code. So for him to be and have that reputation he has going into this derby run now, right. you have to wonder with those conservative connections, what they're going to do with him. Are they going to be happy with that performance? Go on maybe to the, the Florida Derby or try to run in the Wood Memorial or something, give him one more chance to get in the derby? Or are they going to back off him and wait to New York in the summertime? So to me, big question marks around Honor Code. I wouldn't be surprised. I didn't move him down on a one-day turnaround, but wouldn't be surprised that if he moves down our list quite a bit after this weekend. All right, I see strong mandate. You know, he's, he's going to be running this weekend. But, you know, the, the next thing that's interesting to me is, is when we look at 6 through 10. You know, you mentioned Conquest Titan and his closing ability. Joel, he couldn't close on a, on a maiden winner in the Tampa Bay Derby. And, of course, I'm talking about Ring Weekend, a huge runner in this race. Uh, I see you, got, you dropped him a little bit, but you got him still on the list. Well, I'll talk about Conquest Titan real quick. Yeah, I still left him on the list because, quite frankly, I'm not finding enough horses now at this point that I would put over him just because because he's a horse for course at Churchill, and I like the way he ran, you know, in the Holy Bull, John. But Mark Cassidy's another guy hasn't really gave off a lot of positive signs about this colt. I mean, they they missed the Fountain of Youth with him, felt like he needed time, like he was sitting on a bounce, didn't come out of that race as well as they would have hoped he would, and he ran hard as a two-year-old late in the year, and again in the Holy Bull. So the fact that they ran him at Tampa, look, I. I'm going to not, the fact that he didn't hit the board doesn't concern me at all because okay. Tampa is a track that, look, a lot of times horses just don't handle it. I'm willing to give him a pass for that. But the bottom line is some of his clocker reports from Palm Meadows lately have not been very positive. So you wonder if Conquest Titans going the wrong way. I'm willing to give him a pass, leave him on the top 10 for now, but he had to slide a little bit for me. But let's go to the Twin Spires TV race replay and take a look at the stretch run of okay. the Tampa Bay Derby. Conquest Titan does have a, a tough trip. He's down here stuck on the rail behind Vince Ramos, so he's in kind of tight there, John. Finishes up okay, but your runaway winner here, Ring Weekend, another son of Tappet. We've been talking about these sons of Tappet seemingly all winter and spring long, John. Well, you see him just run away here. After he goes 46-3 and three for a half mile, has a runaway winner on the front end. He rebreaks again in the stretch, and he's coming off a narrow maiden win, you know, on the dirt on Don Handicap Day. So right. who knows how good this colt really is? Is it the Tampa surface that he just happened to love? Look at him. He's on his wrong lead here. Certainly a big future, a big upside here. He's just, he's out of a crypto clearance dam, so he does have some stamina on the bottom side, John. But but how good is he, and how much did that Tampa surface aid him? And then what was behind him? I mean, if Conquest Titan didn't find his best race, Vince Ramos, you know, certainly behind him. Todd Pletcher's other horse, Sur Surfing USA, really question mark on how good the horses are behind him. So we'll have to see him next time out to see how good maybe Ring Weekend is. And you could see him and Conquest Titan, in my opinion, in the bluegrass. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about the horse you have in it number nine because Joel he was very impressive in the San Felipe out in California tell me a little bit about that race and, and and why I see you put him new on that list well a lot of people think I have him rated too low there and that's California Chrome at the number nine spot John here's a horse that has a lot of two-year-old experience 
and he's done very well against Calbreds. He's certainly been developing, enjoying, you know, his stretch out around two turns, gaining some experience and getting better, which we've seen three-year-olds this time of year. They certainly all have a license to blossom. He looks like the real deal, John, but I don't think his performance in the San Felipe to where he went fast as well, and it tracks lightning fast out there right now. He went 140 and changed from a mile and a 16th. That's a blistering time. But that track is fast right now, and it was certainly playing to speed over the weekend. And I just don't know what he beats. So we go now to the Twin Spires TV race replay. We'll look at the stretch run. Good HD footage here from Santa Anita. And you see here, Midnight Hawk. We talked about him last time right. out, John, in the Bob Lewis. He's up and down. I mean, he's totally done. Nothing behind your winner here is finishing at all. So to me, that makes him look a lot better than maybe he was. I, I'm gonna be a little bit guarded. He got a big bris in that number here. The track was fast, got a 102 bris in that number. Okay. That's all fine and grand, but the other two times he ran against quality competition around two turns, open greatest takes horses, he was he was not he was off the board, did not run as well. So I need to see California Chrome in a race that he's gonna face some decent opposition, going a true route of ground over a track that's not gonna play to that you know, margin of victory, especially after Midnight Hawk and everything behind him did not run well. I'm gonna give him his credit, but I still need to see a little more. All right, before we move on and talk about the Rebel, because we, we see some serious competition in there, I just wanna say something. It seems like we're seeing a lot of front runners so far this year, you know? It looks yeah. like a lot of horses with a lot of speed that, uh, you know, are gonna be entering into the Derby or at least are gonna have a shot at it. It's right. interesting to me, it could be one of those years where we see a, a, you know, a closer that maybe is kind of off the radar right now that could run huge in that race. Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, that's why I like horses like, you know, Conquest Titan. That's why I like top billing so much, John, because you start kind of add putting the piece of the puzzle together. You see in all this speed developing the first Saturday in May, you kind of, you know, projecting a full 20 horse field. You want to have somebody that can only get the distance, but also has the ability to adapt to that style of a race. So I totally agree with you. I mean, throw social inclusion in there now. I mean, uh, you know, horses even like Cairo Prince is a, a very tactical horse constitution. So a lot of sorting out to be done, but you're right. It seems like there's a lot of tactical, a lot of quick horses right now and a lot of top tens in the Derby list. Well, let's talk about a horse we have in at number three right now, and that is Strong Mandate. He's gonna be running this weekend. Joel, it's, it's really a rematch here, I see, between him and Tapature, a horse that kind of likes to run on the front end like we're talking about. Strong mandate is a horse that can be a little more tactical. Tell me, what do you think about the Rebel this weekend? Well, uh, you get Aiden here, and there are a few horses you can throw out right off the bat, in my opinion. I don't, I don't know if this was a product of, you know, people not wanting to come in because they thought Honorco was going to run in here. Once Suge decided not to run, you know, I think it may have changed the tactics of some people. I mean, look, Bob Baffert, you know, having the, you know, the fact that he's already running some horses, uh, in graded stakes on the card, he puts Hopportunity on the plane mm -hmm. for Mike Smith to ride in here. Hopportunity, you know, to me, when I look at his Risen Star, he was off the board there, beating seven lengths in that race, John, just never really made an impact. I question how good he is. Uh, Kobe's back, another California horse coming in. To me, he looks like a great one-turn horse. You know, I would look at, you know, Kobe's back, look at that pedigree, look at his stride, and to me, he's like Midnight Hawk. He's like a, a good one-turn seven-eighths, uh, maybe a one-turn mile type colt. I'm not so sure Kobe's back wants to be a two-turn horse. You know, so going here in a mile and a sixteenth around two turns, I love the two local horses. Like you just mentioned, Tapature, Strong Mandate. We know what happened the first time when they faced each other in Southwest. Tapature ran, lights out, got a tremendous trip, was able to really spurt away from Strong Mandate, who had problems in that race. But now, coming back in here now, Tapature, Strong Mandate drawn next to each other, both with tactical speed. I really think it's going to develop into a match race between these two. Wouldn't be surprised to see Ride on Curlin go the lead again. I mean, Kent DeSormo is a very aggressive rider. And I really think the winner from this race is going to come from Tapature, Strong Mandate, both stalking there. I do think Strong Mandate is the better colt. That's why he's number three on our list. That's why Tapature just now cracked into our list in the top 10. I think Strong Mandate's the better Derby contender, but he's got to show it this weekend. He has to show up. It's interesting to me, right on Curlin, jockey change there. Just wanted to mention Calvin Burrell, you know, he decided to go with street strategy. So just wanted to throw that out there. It's interesting that they're going to be a new jockey there on right on Curlin. So well, street strategy is uh, an interesting up and comer in here. To me, if there's any outsider has a shot to beat the top two, I think it's him because he's under feeder over that track. You know, first time around two turns, he won by half a dozen. Calvin Burrell moves over to him, and he's a $425,000 son of Street Sense. So not only is he bred to get the 
two turns in the classic distance, but they obviously thought a lot about this colt to pay that sort of money. So for me, he's the outsider here. And we've seen this with social inclusion. You know, horses that are taking those forward steps and developing this time of year, certainly he's one that is very interesting in here. All right, thank you, Joel. Thank yep. you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We'll see how this weekend's races shake out in the TCI Top 10. Thank <laughs> you.